What's the deal with downscaling? It's like listening to your favorite song in Morse code through an empty toilet roll. And what is the deal with all these extra on scalers? Why do you never see a Kramer for retro gaming? Oh no, honey, we have extra on at home. Everybody loves an Extron. But what about those forgotten brands? Many other scalers support custom resolutions, so there's bound to be some flying under the radar that output 240p. To avoid gambling on an impotent scaler, I need hard proof. With my ear to the ground, I read some posts on shmups that claim to have 240p output on two separate Kramers. One was a VP725DS, and the other a VP747. What do we have here? A cup of creamish? A cup of creamish? These are hefty switches with all the input signal formats you could ask for. Composite, S-Video, Component, multiple flavors of RGB Sync, and HDMI through DVI. These models are unfortunately without audio. Each group of signal formats has its own preview out for pure unprocessed video pass-through. And then there's the scaler to output scaled component or RGB HV through three simultaneous outputs by HD15, BNC or DVI. You'll just have to combine the HV sync if connecting to your CRT by RGBS. Big thanks to Cumulus28 on the Shmups forum for sharing their 240p testing with the VP725DS. I programmed the user resolution while connected to an HD panel to navigate the OSD. Forget 480i output, custom resolutions are only progressive. I first copied Cumulus 28's 254p timings, but found that line doubled content spilled assets to multiple scan lines. The lowest the VP725 lets you drop the vertical amplitude is 241 pixels. I set the vertical frequency to 60Hz, and with the Dreamcast 240p test suite horizontal stripe pattern, I thought I had everything dialed in. but there were constant frame skips. I used the OSSC Pro to check the output signal, and the frame rate unintentionally dropped to 58.25. With the OSSC Pro as my guide to read the vertical frequency, through plenty of trial and error, I used these values to get 59.9 Hz for smooth scrolling in each direction. I got a boner. <laughs> Within the graphics menu was a vertical position setting that moved to the source video's position. This changes the line offset with the goal of averaging two identical lines for pixel perfect scaling of line doubled content. A portion of the top was cut off, but after hours of messing with the sync timings made me just accept it. Maneuvering the image can only be done within a predefined window that's determined by the sync timings. For a head start on centering the picture, there's an auto image option. It's not selectable when inputting HDMI through DVI, so I used a DAC to input VGA as a workaround to use auto image. There's aspect ratio options, but I didn't find them very useful. Instead, I adjusted the HV position and size manually for as close to 16x9 as I thought looked correct. 480 and 720p could scan appropriately to all corners of the CRT, but 1080p was overscanned to the point of being unusable. One could optimize the custom timings for 720 and 1080p, as there are three slots for user resolutions within different groups. VGA and DVI inputs had a rapidly variable 1-2 to two frames of lag for progressive and interlace resolutions. It was the same for component input, 
but 480i jumped up a whole frame. Whether restoring 240p upscaled retro games, non-240p pixel art, 3D media and text-based games, the VP725DS looked very clean in every scenario. You can also get crafty with the color adjustments to give monochrome games a Virtual Boy or DMG look. I was curious to see if I could transcode without running through the scaler, specifically to decode composite video and output RGB. Unsurprisingly, you can't mix and match signal formats in preview mode, as it's purely for switching. It can be done in scalar mode at the cost of 1-2 to two frames. With Tim Worthington's Game Gear TV video mod, I output composite NTSC to have the Kramer decode into RGB, but it led to Chroma crosstalk and a fabulous rainbow. That box is meant to be white. The scalar and group switching do not operate in tandem. It's either a scalar or a switcher at any given time. This means you cannot loop the scalar's output into one of the VGA inputs to pass through and output into a single signal. So if you wanted to use both the preview and scaled outputs, you'll need two separate RGB or component inputs on your CRT. Overall, the Kramer VP725DS is a unique offering for anyone wanting a switcher and downscaler in one. Just be mindful of the 1-2 to two frames of lag and no scaled 480i output. I'm fortunate that I can use the OSSC Pro to sniff the vertical frequency to output as close to 60Hz as possible. But others that don't have the means to do the same will be winging it. The image controls are adequate, and the three user output timings should be enough to cater for varied input resolutions. And anyone willing to try may have better luck than me with 1080p. The array of inputs and outputs are its standout feature thanks to a 2-in-1 switching and scaling design. The VP725DS is an interesting find that carves a tiny place in an already small niche. So now onto the other Kramer. The VP747's ability to output 240p was discovered by Harb1911. This could be a better fit for downscaling with multiple user resolutions, and even a rotation feature, something I've only seen in the Dido Pro and Junior. Programming 240p timings was more or less the same process and it's also missing in a lace output. Orange 808, an esteemed member on Shmups, chimed in on the Kramer VP747. Apparently, it's a later model built around the Rialta HQV chip and reportedly packs 4 frames of lag. Not exactly gaming friendly if true. So, I put it to the test hoping for less than 4. Looks like they were wrong. It ain't four. It's actually six. Oh my 